Hey everyone, today we are at uh, BTC Summit and I am with Jeff. So uh, Jeff, uh, I would like to know about you, uh, yeah. what what exactly you are doing, uh, who you are. Yeah, so hey guys, I'm Jeff, I'm the founder of Money Chain. Uh, we are Bitcoin Layer 2, I would say one of the biggest right now, if not the biggest. Uh, we started really early uh, last year, but before that, uh, we were building some small apps on Bitcoin Layer 1. Uh, like you know, for all in alls, for inscriptions, and then we were thinking about you know we should do a layer two because the users want easier and faster transactions. So we built Merlin in early 2024. We hit 4.6 billion TVO in two months, and uh, we our token got listed on OKX by 20 plus exchanges in April. And I think today is like you know a year after our token listing, and uh, I think it's a fun journey. We mm. have done lots of things in BTC Fi, in Bitcoin ecosystems. And that's the basic introduction about Merlin. Nice. So um, another question is like, uh, what was the time when you first started uh, working into the Web3? Yeah, I was in Web2 for 12 years. I started two companies years. Is in Web2. Yeah, I grew my first company in 2012. I grew that company to 3,000 employees and sold that company. And second company was Web2 too. But in 2023, I first saw the Ordinals. Basically means you can inscribe content on Bitcoin Layer 1. I think that's super cool because that content will be there forever and it will be uncensored. So that triggers me, you know, want to do something for Bitcoin and then, you know, Bitcoin Layer 1, Ordin Loss and then Merlin. That's the journey behind the, you know, behind the thing. Amazing. Uh, so um, I would like to know, like, what is your biggest learning in this Web3 space? Yeah. Which you want to share, like, any experience would you like to share in terms of learning? Yeah, I think for builders, just build something cool, unique. It can be crazy, outrageous, but you know, build something cool because there's so many narratives, so many terms that you people are using every day, you know, like DeFi, yield, uh, DAX, lending. So people are really tired of you know the terms they heard before. So that's the reason when we're building Ordinals, it's something new. The investors, the users don't understand what is behind Ordinals, what is recursive inscriptions, what is programmable inscriptions, what is ruins. So people don't understand that. And that's when you have a chance to build something unique and you know get impressions from the market. Markets. But if you're just you know copycats building something people have done before, it, it just doesn't give you edges you know to to convince no matter users or investors or partners. Amazing. So uh, uh, there's a very uh, important question like everyone have have in the mind like uh, there are a thousands and maybe like uh, more than thousands of projects are on EVMs. Yeah. Uh, but now we are seeing like this is the era of Bitcoin layer one. Can you just give us the differentiate, like why Bitcoin layer and why the EVM? What is the difference? What is the things behind? If we are, we are like majorly, uh, I think the, a few times before, like everyone was using the EVM. If they are building something, they are building on EVM. But now the people are shifting to a Bitcoin layer. What is the difference behind? What are the things like the people are missing out? Uh, and what are the benefits to going for the Bitcoin layer? And what are the pros and cons for Bitcoin? A uh, more explanation. Yeah, on this week. I think, you know, starting last year, people see this potential behind Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin is $2 trillion worth of value. But yes. Ethereum, you know, there are thousands of DeFi projects, uh, you know, like the, the market cap for Ethereum is like very low compared to Bitcoin. So people are thinking, why don't we build something for Bitcoin? Because if even you build something, only have 1% share, market share of Bitcoin, it still be a lot, you know, in $2 trillion valuation. So I think that's a start. And after that, people are trying to find solutions, you know, in order to build for Bitcoin. So some people are trying to build on Bitcoin layer one, but the problem is the, the limitation of no smart contract on layer one, uh, the transaction fee is too high, the block time is too, too long, the block size too small. So there are some people trying to do something called layer two. Uh, you know, there are stacks, there are EVM solutions, there are Babylon. So I think different teams are having different solutions. I, I think until right now, there's like no winning solution or, you know, like nobody's winning because it's still, we, we only have one to 2% uh, TVL for Bitcoin. So imagine one to two point market share to 10%. 10% of $2 trillion will be $200 billion. That would be crazy. So I think today is just a start, a very early start. And uh, nothing is you know, for sure. So I can tell you, you know, which, which one is right or not. No, it's just the start of everything. Yeah, I'm 100% uh, agree with you. Like there is nothing like to which you give like, this is the winning strategy, go for it. No, you have to work on it. You have to test it. Maybe like you have to come up with three plans instead of two. I always uh, uh, I always advise to like come up with the three plans. 
you start with first two, test the first two, then another, if there's a one fail, test two and three. Yeah. In this three, you will find the one winning one. Yeah. Uh, so this is the like uh, way and um, uh, yeah, that's why I totally agree. So, um, uh, like uh, what is your opinion, like what is your take, like where the Web3 space is going on in upcoming two, three years? Yeah, I think we should. Uh, we need more real, real world cases. You know, like uh, Pay Five. I think right now, you know, Solana, uh, uh, OKX, they're all doing Pay Five because we want more users to onboard. So I think that's the first thing. We need more users to easily get on board with crypto. And also, we need something actually, you know, can be used for you know, everyday life. You know, not only pay, but you know, DeFi making yields, buying stocks. You know, like just having something really close to everyday people because right now. Uh, when it comes to crypto, it's like, you know, perps, uh, memes, um, DeFi. I think those narratives are too far away from everyday people. So I'm really looking forward to something, you know, closer to, you know, everyday people and make sure people can be on board. Sounds cool. Uh, and uh, uh, like uh, anything, would you like to share, uh, like uh, in the future updates, what the things and coming up from, the, from your side, uh, if anything is cooking up, anything you want to share, yeah, I mean, I mean, we're still you know, building. Uh, if you guys, you know, just follow us on Twitter and stuff, we will share stuff every week. We have video streaming every week too. And I think, you know, today is a very good time to enter the market, no matter you are, you know, user or trader or builder. Mm. But I think, you know, this is growing. You know, we see lots of, you know, new policies happening in Europe, in USA, in Asia. So I think, you know, this is growing and uh, it's never too late to, to jump in. You know, for the past 10 years, people ask me when to buy Bitcoin. I always say, you know, it's never too late. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jeff, yeah, for, uh, for this short conversation. Hopefully, in the future, we'll be sitting uh, somewhere and we'll talk a little uh, more. Because, like, the things you have mentioned is really inspiring. Uh, really, thank you so much. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you. Thank you.